Hi, I thought I would make one more video as I, I talked about uh, doing a video for Compline. Um, that is found in the Book of Common Prayer. Usually you'll see it as a, a burgundy colored book, a red colored book. And it's on page 722 at the back of the book. Um, this is a, a service that often is done before bed. It is called Compline as it compiles the day. Uh, so it's recognition that you are, the day is now complete and you are going into, into a ton of sleep. Um, so it is a, a really beautiful, it's probably one of my favorite uh, services to say. Uh, it's really great if you can find a dark spot, light a candle, and uh, find yourself with enough light to read. But it is, uh, I find it to be a really meaningful and beautiful uh, service. Um, I have sort of a fancier clergy copy, so I'll be using this version, but you'll, you'll usually, f most people just have one of these. Um, so it starts on page 722, that's what it looks like. And it starts with a, a psalm. Uh, a lot of the liturgy is actually pieces of psalms put together. So. Praying liturgically, whether it's morning prayer or evening prayer or Compline or the Eucharist, or uh, a lot of what you find there is actually um, scripture, especially the Psalms. It's a way of praying with scripture. Uh, so it, there will be Anglicans who maybe don't know their Bibles very well, but they know their, their prayer book. And they, as they're reading through the Psalms, they'll recognize pieces of the liturgy um, throughout the, the Psalms. So well, let's just go through the order of the Compline. I'll show you how we, um, an easy way to, to pray with Compline. Uh, it starts uh, with these pieces of scripture. Uh, the Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Uh, then there's an option for psalms to read. Uh, you'll find at the very bottom here, uh, sort of in the middle of the page, I guess not the bottom, um, it gives options for psalms. So you can use Psalm 4, Psalm 31 verses 1 to 6, Psalm 91, Psalm 134, and what you might want to do is just rotate through those. Those are all very appropriate for getting ready for bed. Um, in the prayer book language, getting ready for bed is, um, as I said, almost like a practicing for death. And so a lot of it is about uh, preparing yourself and protecting yourself against what might be out there in the dark, but also what might be in the unknown, um, what might pr what might you be afraid of at the time of death if you weren't going to wake up from this night's sleep what how do you have to prepare yourself and uh, i think that uh compline does a good job of preparing us in that in that way so um anyway so psalm 4 psalm 31 verses 1 to 6 psalm 91 or psalm 134 you can kind of rotate through those and one day do Psalm 4, one day do Psalm 31, one day do Psalm 91, and just sort of do that as your evening goes on. And then you have uh, an option of a, um, four scripture readings that you might, or three scripture readings that you might want to read. Um, so I'll read the middle, um, at the, the Matthew 11 reading. Come unto me, all ye that, are, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Um, you can feel that you've come to the end of your day, and if it's a hard day that you just had, um, you can feel Jesus saying, put down your burden. Um, come to me. Um, stop carrying that, whatever you're carrying. And then we turn over to page 200 and, uh, or sorry, 723. And in response to that scripture reading, we respond, thanks be to God. Thank you, Jesus, for 
calling me to rest from my labor this day and giving me rest, giving me sleep. Uh, we continue on. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. So we're entrusting ourselves to God. And then there is a, a song or a poem called uh, Te Lucius. Um, it's often sung, and I, I like to have it sung more than saying it. And so the way it sings is this. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that with thy wanted favor thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes, from nightly fears and fantasies. Tread underfoot our ghostly foe, that no pollution we may know. O oh, Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost and thee doth live and reign eternally. Amen. Um, I can't remember who wrote that. I think it's attributed to someone um, in the 500s. Um, maybe I'll, I'll look that up and I'll put it in the, in the notes under the video. Um, but it is an ancient song and I think it's, it's very beautiful. Um, at the bottom of the page, we continue on with our liturgy. Keep us as the apple of an eye, hide us under the shadow of thy wings. And the anthem is, preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And we skip over the alleluias because we're in Lent at the moment. Uh, and then we go into the Nunc Dimittis, which is the song of Simeon from Luke chapter 2. So you remember that Jesus, as a baby, was brought to the temple, and Simeon saw the baby, and he thanked God that now he could die because he had now seen the Messiah. And that was the promise that he uh, felt he had received from God, that he would not die without seeing the Messiah. And so we pray using his words, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And our anthem again, Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Um, and again, we have the Apostles' Creed, and the, in each of these services, we often do say the Apostles' Creed. It's a way of just reminding us of the story that we're a part of, and whose we are. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I know sometimes people get hung up on the Holy Catholic Church, and people will sometimes come to me and say, well, I thought we were in an Anglican church, not in a Catholic church. Uh, but Catholic, the word Catholic just means like universal, or uh, I've heard it interpreted a couple different ways. Uh, one is in the sense that it is the, God, the church everywhere as God sees the church, uh, regardless of denomination. And I've also heard Catholic mean more like a fullness, like there is uh, no peace missing. 
So the Catholic Church is the, the fullness of the, of the church, and all the teachings are need, are, that are, are needed are included in that. Uh, so um, someone more learned can, can say more about that. Uh, we continue on with the prayers. Uh, let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. That uh, is an ancient prayer also from Scripture. It reminds us a bit of the, the Jesus prayer that is uh, said often in the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Where they'll say that over and over and over as a way of um, putting their hearts into a place of prayer. Then we go to the Lord's Prayer, uh, which is a... All, all our prayers can be summarized uh, inside that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. And then we go into uh, confession, which is a good thing to do if you're going to bed and uh, as the prayer book assumes, you might not wake up. And so confession is good to end your day with. And it's also a good way to, to sleep. Um, if there's anything that's weighing on you that happened that day that you want to relieve yourself of, that you need forgiveness for, that can make maybe for a better sleep. If you can put that down or put that on the cross. Uh, we confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, through our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray, God, to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins, and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And again, you might want to take time to... Uh, think before you say that confession, to actually have something specific in mind, that, so it's not just words, uh, but that you can think about the frustration you had with someone today, that, or the unkind thing that you said, or the, the gossip, or, you know, whatever it is that, that plagues you, um, whatever way that you have um, betrayed Christ in a small or big way that day, Bring that to mind before you speak the confession. And the confession itself, again, is a good way of uh, guiding your thoughts, your meditation on where you maybe um, weren't the person that you should have been um, in thought, word, or in deed, both by things you've done and by things you maybe not have, you, sh you should have done that you didn't. And then there comes to the absolution. Um, usually that is the priest that says that absolution, So, but you might want to turn to page 230. And on page 230, that is a, something called a pardon through the cross, which is um, included in the prayers to be used for families. So you'll find that as the uh, third paragraph down on page 730, and this is the pardon through the cross. Almighty Father, who of thy great love to men didst give thy dearly beloved Son, to die for us, grant that through his cross our sins may be put away and remembered no more against us, and that cleansed by his blood and mindful of his sufferings, we may take up our cross daily and follow him in newness of life until we come to his everlasting kingdom through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that is a, a prayer for forgiveness that, is, that is, can be used in place of the absolution on page um, 2, 726. So after the absolution, we move back into prayer. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. 
Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. Uh, and then we say the collect of the day. And that can be a little trickier if you're, uh, depending on which book you're using for your prayers, um, you have to sort of flip around and, and uh, find your, uh, um, flip around and find your, your collect. Um, so we are in the week of the third Sunday in Lent, and so that collect will be found on page 145. Uh, and the prayer goes, We beseech thee, Almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants, and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defense against all our enemies, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And that's the prayer that you would use uh, sort of all the way through the week until the next Sunday. And then the next Sunday would give us uh, the next thematic collect for the, the fourth Sunday in Lent. Um, so if you were using the Book of Common Prayer, you'd use that collect pretty much at every, every service. To, and that kind of gives a neat unity to all those services and reminds you of what happened on Sunday in a sense as well. Um, we move down to the bottom of page 726 and we have the collect for protection. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, this place and drive from it all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace. And may thy blessing be upon us evermore through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, one of the things I like about the Book of Common Prayer is, it is uh, it's gritty in a way. It, uh, it has older language for sure and that can tr really trip some people up. But it also has this grit to it where it's not shy about recognizing that we do have enemies. And, uh, and we pray against uh, darkness, we pray against evil, and uh, that can be uh, important for us to do in an age when we don't really want to uh, admit that there, there is evil out there in the world, or we want to try to merely psycholog psychologize it or make it about sociology uh, and not recognize that if we added up all the psychology and sociology factors, that maybe there is still an evil left that can't be explained in those in those ways. So uh, I know that maybe makes some people uncomfortable, and, um, and so they might want to use the alternative prayer at the top of page 727, which goes, Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And then, so those are two options for that next prayer. And then there are a number of other prayers that may be added. So you don't have to add those, but it's, sort of, it's up to you um, how much time you have or uh, what, which way your heart is inclined. And I'll just read these ones that they give us on page 727. The Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who at this evening hour didst rest in the sepulcher and does thereby sanctify the grave to be a bed of hope to thy people. Make us so to abound in sorrow for our sins, which were the cause of thy passion, that when our bodies lie in the dust, our souls may live with thee, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. And in this prayer especially, you can see how death uh, in the Book of Common Prayer is often considered a preparation for death. Look down, O Lord, from thy heavenly throne, Illuminate the darkness of this night with thy celestial brightness, and from the sons of light banish the deeds of darkness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be present, O merciful, o merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, and a prayer I like to insert here, which isn't necessarily uh, prescribed by the Book of Common Prayer, but um, I'll often take a moment at this point and I'll include any any prayer request that is on my heart. I might go and, and pray for people that are on my mind. Um, I might pray for any issues that are going on in the world. Um, and then I'll pray this prayer. It's a general inter intercession found on page 57. And it goes like this. 
Be mindful, O Lord, of thy people bowed before thee, and of those who are absent through age, sickness, or infirmity. Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, collect the scattered, and bring the wandering to thy fold. Travel with the voyagers, defend the widows, shield the orphans, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Succor all who are in tribulation, necessity, or distress. Remember for good all those that love us and those that hate us and those that have desired us unworthy as we are to pray for them. And those whom we have forgotten, do thou, O Lord, remember. For thou art the helper of the helpless, the savior of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. Thou who knowest each man's need and hast heard his prayer, grant unto each according to thy merciful loving kindness and thy eternal love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I think that's a very beautiful prayer. Um, I know there's a lot of male language in the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, I don't think it, it means to be exclusionary. Um, I think that uh, using words like man was meant to be inclusive uh, when this was written. Um, so hopefully we can sort of have a bit of grace and, and read it as it was meant to be uh, read and not with our, our sort of modern filters sometimes filtering onto that. Uh, I know it's um, but if you if you need to change the words, feel free to do that. Um, I do that from time to time as well um, to make it a little more inclusive. Uh, so then I return back to page 727 at the very bottom. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Um, and whenever I have those kinds of responses, I always imagine the cloud of witnesses that uh, we're told surround us or the angels that are um, maybe, uh, maybe in the room with us that we, we don't notice because they're on a different plane of existence. So um, we, are, we are a part of the community even if we don't see it. And even if, uh, even if not that, then we are also saying these prayers as a part of a community. We are not the only ones saying Compline today. Um, and we can, at the, it continues at the very top of page 728. Let, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bless and preserve us. Amen. So that is a Compline in the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, I hope you will find it as, as beautiful and helpful in reaching out to God at the end of the day. Uh, as I find it. So God bless you. I hope this helps.